And it seems like it's something that is recurring in Transformers Last Night. And it's something that I can't stand. What's up, Rage Nation? How's it going? This is Alex, you and you're watching The Road to TF5. This is web series where we're talking about Transformers last night. This is episode number 143, and in this episode, we're going to save all the shoutouts to the very end of this episode. Right now, we got to talk about current events. And what is happening right now, currently? CinemaCon 2017. Big event happening at Las Vegas right now. Four-day event ends on Thursday, and on Tuesday... That's when the Transformers Last Night presentation took place. Director Michael Bay was there, as well as producer Lorenzo de Bonaventura, as well as the cast of Transformers Last Night, which included Mark Wahlberg, Isabella Monaire, Anthony Hopkins, Laura Haddock, as well as Gerard Carmichael. And what was presented was, of course, the sizzle reel. The sizzle reel is 30 minutes of Michael Bay awesomeness. Bayos, chaos, whatever you want to call it. Mayhem. <laughs> Anyways... A lot of brand new scenes that we haven't seen in the trailers, the TV spots, and as well as a couple of behind the scenes that have never before seen before. A couple of lucky Transformers fans who attended the Transformers Super Fan event that happened last week already saw it. And then if you're able to secure a ticket to the exclusive IMAX event that's happening next week in select IMAX theaters in select cities around the world you will be able to see that sizzle reel but that was what was shown at CinemaCon and then of course there was a panel where the audience and the media were uh, able to ask questions to Michael Bay the producer as well as the cast and what was at CinemaCon was something very, very cool because there was this awesome Optimus Prime cardboard standee that was shown right in the middle of the lobby. And this is just super cool. I would love to see this in person. I hope they show or rather have this cardboard standee in the theaters because when I see things like this in person, it just makes me go crazy. Like, it's just like standing next to the Western Star Optimus Prime truck. It just you know, makes you feel like a kid again. So, I hope we get to see that. Um, that is awesome. And, of course, uh, when uh, they were done doing the panel, Michael Bay was making his rounds with the media. And you can see in this photo, he's got his hands like that. And I can just picture what he's saying right now. I'm going to do my best Michael Bay impression. And he's probably saying something like, Look, we're playing with $250 million in this film. And we're shooting in IMAX 3D. We're one of the only films that is shooting in true IMAX 3D. We got Optimus Prime and Bumblebee. And we're introducing a whole lot of new characters. And it's just going to be really, really huge. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I've been wanting to work with Anthony Hopkins for a while. And we got Mark Wahlberg back. And we got this new talent from Nickelodeon, Isabella Monaire. And it's just going to be a lot of fun. And yeah. That's my best Michael Bay impression. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. So what else is happening currently? Well, the official Transformers movie website has just launched. It's transformersmovie.com. And currently, it's got material for Transformers Last Night. And I'm sure once Transformers Last Night is done with, they're going to have the Bumblebee movie be on the transformersmovie.com website and once the bumblebee movie is done and then the next movie which i think is the cybertron prequel and then after that there's going to be more movies to come but anyways that is the whole point of them registering transformersmovie.com because there's a reason why you don't see transformerslastnight.com or thelastnight.com or ageofextinction.com because you know there's that there's just too many domains to register make it into just one single hub and then just change the material as every movie comes out currently the material that is there is stuff we've already seen before like the trailers uh the clip the extended tv spot a lot of the character posters uh, or character motion posters rather and the synopsis but besides that not a whole lot of new material if anything at all 
we're probably going to get more updates later on so make sure you bookmark that site and check on it periodically because there's probably going to be some updates that we're going to get from time to time right now there's something really really cool and that is steve jablonski's score that is playing in the background of the website now it's not his entire score of course but there is one track that really stands out and um he decided to use that for the website to be playing in the background and i i'm thinking that based on what i'm hearing it could be the score or rather the track that is played during the medieval scenes for some reason when i hear this track it just sounds like, like i can picture it being played during the medieval scenes and it sounds really good i really like steve jablonski's work in the transformers live action universe franchise because he just he just provides this score that really really stands out it's got these heroic pieces these villainous pieces and it's just really action-packed and it just feels really really epic and you know steve jablonski is a frequent collaborator with michael bay worked on all the transformers films the island as well as this the ninja turtle sequel so his work is really really awesome and i'm just so glad to see steve jablonski back as the composer for transformers last night anyways let's move on let's talk about what's going on in toy news and we got some more leaked images and what we got to see here is i don't know who this is supposed to be but this is a leaked image from chinese social media website weibo.com and could this be the aston martin db11 i mean it kind of looks like it it kind of doesn't uh, but um, it's a silver sports car. It's a silver exotic. And I can only think of one silver exotic, and that is the Aston Martin DB11. Doesn't quite look like an Aston Martin, but it kind of does. And you can actually see the Aston Martin logo on the side. So I guess this is this is supposed to be that vehicle. The thing is that, like we can't we can't see the robot mode of it which is really unfortunate because if we got to see the entire package of it we at least get to know what the robot mode for the aston martin looks like so we don't get to see that we just get to see the vehicle and apparently it's a turbo changer after all in the top right corner it says that it only requires one step to change it so that's it right there that is our first look at a toy form of the of potentially the aston martin db11 also what was leaked is a brand new image of or brand new images of the um of the mpm3 like the movie masterpiece line and that is the bumblebee and this is a new version of bumblebee here's the vehicle mode here is the robot mode there's actually a lot more detail here um this is a um this is from uh, Weibo.com, and um, it's not in very high resolution. But based on this photo, I can actually see more detail than I did when they showed photos at New York Toy Fair. It just looks like there's there's more paint on it, and you can see a lot more definition. And this is definitely something I'm going to pick up. So there you have it. Anyways, let's go back to talk about CinemaCon, and I got to share with you some reactions. Now, this reaction is not very um spoilerish it's just a tweet or a couple of tweets rather from eric vesp who is one of the writers for ain't it cool news.com and here's what he had to say i i really want to share with uh share this with you because i want to know your thoughts about this michael bay said the new transformers was shot entirely in imax 3d which cost an extra 10 to 15 million but was a visual benefit he fought for Saw about 10 to 15 minutes of Transformers last night. I wish I could make heads or tails what the Woo! I just watched. <laughs> uh, next, something about Autobots being a part of King Arthur's Round Table, a post apocalyptic robot world with hero Mark Wahlberg and a sexy scholar. As usual, the tone was all over the place from dead serious to goofy comedy in the same scene. Aspect ratios were switching with every shot. I'm not saying it to be a d or to talk down on pop cinema, but I'm truly at a loss how to describe any of the Transformers footage I saw. So that's Eric Vesp and his initial reaction for the footage that he saw for Transformers last night. And well, what do I got to say about that? Well, you know, this is no different than what a lot of critics 
say about Michael Bay's films, especially the Transformers films. You know, they have a lot of negativity towards him because of the types of films he make. He makes, rather. And with this being a Transformers film, which also includes, you know, medieval, you know, myths and legends, that's that's material for them to uh like fire back at. Like that's material that's for them to to target at. And to them, it just sounds like a bit of a mess. For me, like I haven't seen it yet, but for me, I just think that for people to really enjoy these films and what they see, you have to also know the source material as well as just having an open mind and watching these films. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're stuck to your G1 ways or if you're not open to Michael Bay films, then of course you're going to have something negative to say about it. And that's how I feel about what Eric Vesp's reaction is to what he saw. Now, the only thing that I have a little bit of um uh, I guess negative reaction about is something that I've complained about in the past and that is shifting aspect ratios something we saw in Revenge of the Fallen another thing we also saw in Age of Extinction and it seems like it's something that is recurring in Transformers Last Night and it's something that I can't stand I can't stand shifting aspect ratios it distracts you from the awesomeness of the IMAX scope and then it takes you away from that once we go to a close-up of a human. And it's something that he does. And it's really, really unfortunate. And I just wish he would just get it. <laughs> Take some lessons from Christopher Nolan. Anyways, so that's what I have to say about that. Uh, what else was there? Um, um, goofy comedy in the same scene as Dead Serious. Uh, that's also a Michael Bay thing. He says he does it to... Um, to lighten up the tone. It's like edgy, serious, violent action. And then he wants to lighten it up with a big cheer, like audience applause. Not applause, but a big audience laugh at the end of the scene. And, you know, sometimes I mind it. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes it works. And sometimes it's just straight up cringy. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know what to say about that. But it just seems like typical Michael Bay. <laughs> So that's all I really have to say with regards to that. Um, now, this is something that I read in a headline, okay? And that is apparently at CinemaCon or at the CinemaCon scissor reel footage, it said that, or rather, it suggested that there, there, um, there are scenes that mention that, uh, that it deals with Bumblebee's past. That's all I'm going to say. But basically, the headline said that it dealt with the next film, Transformers Last Night, deals with Bumblebee's past. So, that is very interesting. I didn't read the rest of the spoilerish material, but I did read the headline. And based on that headline alone, it just makes me, um, uh, I guess it gives me a little bit more faith in the writer's room. Because in this room of 14 writers who worked together for a month, they were able to set up the next couple of years and the next film we're getting is a bumblebee movie which is which uh from what i've read is a prequel and what they're doing in transformers last night is setting that up not the entire movie sets it up but maybe a portion of it sets it up and it gives us it probably gives us enough merit material for us to really be interested in in a Bumblebee prequel film. So that's something I'm pretty excited about. I'm looking forward to what they're going to say or do or present to us during those scenes which talk about Bumblebee's past. Because when we look at it, uh, we look at Bumblebee in the films, we just see him for what we see. We see him at face value. Camaro doesn't talk. He's, um, he's a sidekick. But uh, besides that, we don't know anything about his character. Who is he? What is he all about? And why is he the way he is? Well, Bumblebee is a character that's got a lot of layers and we're most likely going to find out more of that in Transformers Last Night followed by the Bumblebee spin-off film. So that's all I got to talk about with regards to CinemaCon. There is spoilerish material out there for people who decided to describe what they saw at CinemaCon, but I'm not going to watch that. 
the sizzle reel is a week from now, so I can wait. I'm not going to spoil myself for something that is going to be presented next week. So I'm not even going to talk about that, which brings me to talk about spoilers. Okay, so once again, uh, like I said before, I'm going to talk about spoilers um, once I finish watching the IMAX sizzle reel for the people who have seen it. It won't be a spoiler to you. But for the people who haven't seen it, it will be a spoiler for you. So once again, I'm going to put a spoiler warning out there. And the last thing I want to say with regards to following up on that is that if you are going to the IMAX screening event or the IMAX sizzle reel event for Transformers last night, don't take out your phone or camera and record the screen. Don't do that. I'm freaking serious. If I find out that anybody... From the Rage Nation community is doing that because you shared it on YouTube or something. I'm going to ban you. I'm dead serious about that. The reason why I'm really serious about this is because what you're doing is illegal. And you can go to jail for that. And I don't want to encourage any of that kind of activity. So therefore, don't film the screen. And I will definitely ban you for life if I find out that somebody is sharing that that footage or if you, if you yourself did it and well I can't have that. So I'm being completely serious about that. That is an illegal activity. It's something I don't want to encourage. So therefore, let's get rid of it all together. So anyways, watch it when you watch the movie. It's coming out in 3 months. We got 3 months of of a uh, <laughs> of awesomeness that's happening not only in the road to tf5 but also with more marketing material as well as the release of the toys there's a lot of excitement going on before the release of the movies so you know there's no need for any illegal activity okay so we don't need to do any of that all right so that's all i gotta say in this episode i'm done and what we're gonna do now is shout outs happy birthday to dj evolve 3 Alessandro G123, Tyler J Wolf, and Cyb Flix. Happy birthday to all y'all. Hope you have a good one. Thank you for being part of the Raging Nation. And now we got Twitter shoutouts to do. This goes out to my new followers. Thank you so much for following me on Twitter. Mitchell Anthony, Hawk, Real Madrista, Madridista7, as well as Romelo Bar Reyes, Sunny Tariq, Anthony uses Twitter, Papa Heck, Kakin, Reese Morton, the Lego Transformer, and also Drummer DS. Thanks so much for following me on Twitter. I really appreciate your support, and you guys are awesome. The last little thing that I'd like to do is just uh, take a moment to respond to some Twitter questions. This is from Hawk. Could Isabella be Captain Lennox's daughter? No. Just a plain, simple no. Why? Because her being his daughter serves no purpose. This is not Star Wars. This is not um, a film where if you find out that he's, I mean, she's her daughter, she's her, uh, his daughter, it will make a difference. This is not a movie about human relationships. This is a movie about Transformers. And if that is Lennox's daughter, then what purpose will that serve for the story? Nothing. It doesn't make a difference. So, like, we don't, we don't need any of that. So let's just keep it simple. Um, Suzerettes and Tex asks, Hey, Alex, do you think Decepticon Nitro could be that Apache helicopter? I would love it to be the Apache helicopter. Seriously, I would love that. As far as I know, the SUVs that... Are that make up the TRF uh, vehicle force? Uh, one of them has got to be a Decepticon Berserker, or one or two of them, or more. One of them has got to be a Decepticon Berserker. So I'm just thinking that if the Apache is Decepticon Nitro, I would love that. But I don't know. He doesn't appear to have any um, helicopter parts on him. He he appears to be some sort of other type of aircraft. Uh, but as far as I know. Decepticon Nitro um, is not an Apache, but if he is, that's awesome. I would love to see an Apache Decepticon. <laughs> Let it be Decepticon Nitro. And the last tweet is not necessarily a question, but more of a comment, or rather a compliment, and that is from Sir Jim. 
You're a legend, Alex. I'm always excited to watch your vids, Transformers, Rage and Prime. Thank you very much, Sir Jim. I appreciate your tweet and your compliment. And it's compliments like that that really keep me going. It gives me that encouragement. And you guys are the reason why I keep on making these videos. So thank you so much for your enthusiasm, your excitement, and... I appreciate every single one of you guys, especially since this episode, or rather this, this uh, web series is going on, and for so long, we're up to 143 episodes, not including the Age of Extinction and Dark of the Moon episodes, this is just for Transformers Last Night alone, and the enthusiasm is just overwhelming, I love it. I love you guys, and I love you guys for all the support that you guys have given me. Thank you so much. That is why I'm going to give you guys episode 144, 145, 146, and we're going to keep on going. All right? Anyways, that's all I got to say in this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, if you enjoyed it, hit that like button. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Like me on Facebook, The Rage Nation. Also, follow me on Twitter, Rage Nation. My name is Alexi. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. And... They ravage a whole lot of Cybertron. There's a lot of war. And they actually force the Knights of Cybertron to carry out their sinister whims. 